Have you ever had this happen to you? A client sends an email requesting changes at two different time codes like cut this part out and replace this shot. You might delete this first part and now the time code for the second change doesn't match the shot on your timeline anymore. This is frustrating and annoying, especially when dealing with lots of client changes that affect the time code. So if you edit videos for clients and you find it difficult to manage the change requests, then this video is going to help you speed up your workflow like it did mine. So we'll start with this finished edit about turtles, send it over to the client who is eagerly awaiting the edit. I'll give you some cool Final Cut Pro tips along the way while making the changes and let's see if we can make this client happy. And no, this video is not sponsored by Frame.io. This video is, however, sponsored by Artlist, which is another great tool for client projects. More on that later as well. I've exported the edit and I'm going to open up the Frame.io extension from the extensions menu. I'll drag and drop the file to upload it. And when it's done, I'll right click on the file and select open in web to see it on the Frame.io website. From here, I can right click to share it to my client by either adding their email address or by copying the link. You can also change the status. In this case, I'll set it to needs review and send it to my client. Let's see what it looks like on the client side. It's about time. It's... Welcome to the fascinating world of turtles, where ancient creatures glide through the depths with grace and resilience. Yes. Clients can add comments that are timestamped to the video. Depending on your client, you can expect anywhere from none to a thousand changes, give or take. When the client is done adding all of their comments, they can change the status from in review to in progress, which will automatically notify me via email that the video is ready to be worked on again. Before making the changes, you'll want to duplicate your project so that you can always roll back to a previous version if you need to. There are two ways and it's super important to know the difference between them. Duplicate and snapshot project. Duplicate and duplicate as will create an exact copy of the timeline and the duplicate as option allows you to quickly rename it. If you have a multicam clip or a compound clip on your timeline and you make changes inside that multicam or compound clip in the duplicated version, that change will also be reflected in the original version of the edit. If you want to avoid that, you need to snapshot the project. And then if you make any changes inside the multicam or compound clips in the new version, the original version will remain unaffected. Now that we are in version two of the edit, I'll click on the extensions button up here and open up the frame.io extension and select the video I'm working on. I set my windows up so that I can see Final Cut Pro and the frame.io extension at the same time. I've got all the comments from the client over here and I'll hit this import button. And then I can drag this icon directly onto the timeline. I'll make sure it snaps to the beginning of my timeline and you'll see the duration matches my edit. By default, there is a timecode layer included in this compound clip with comments that are to-do markers. I'll hit Command Shift G to break this compound clip apart and I'll delete the timecode layer. All of the comments will drop down onto my clips. The cool thing is you can open up the index window, choose tags and select the to-do markers. Now I can switch between changes by just selecting each comment. What I love about getting my comments this way is that now if I were to delete a chunk of my edit, the rest of the comments will stay where they should be. I'll undo that and start making the client's changes. The first change is to swap this music out and I'll show you the fast and easy way to do it while keeping effects and keyframes intact between tracks. What I like to do is mark the first beat of the music with a marker by hitting M. You can see I already did that on the original track because I want the music to start here. Regardless of how long the buildup is, I'll trim the music to the exact same length and then I'll select the original music and hit Command C to copy and I'll select the new track and hit Command Shift V to paste attributes. I'll make sure that my effects and volume parameters are selected. I'll click on paste and now I can delete the original track. I might need to retime the shots if I edited to the beat of the music, but in this case, it works perfectly fine. Now I can delete this change off the timeline and mark it as completed in the frame.io extension. I like to also hide completed comments so I only see what I still need to change. Aside from Final Cut Pro, there is something else I use to help me create every single one of my client videos and that is Artlist. For this specific client video, everything comes from Artlist. The stock footage, the music, the sound effects and even the voiceover. That's right. 
The voiceover was generated by Artlist's new AI voice generator, which has a whole range of high quality, exclusive, and most importantly, real sounding voiceovers like this. Your attention please. Artlist is one of the best tools out there for creators. And you can level up your own videos and your client videos easily. If you do not like this video right now, I will find you and I will. And you can also adjust the voice settings, which in my opinion helps to make the voiceover sound more like a human and less like an AI generated voice. This is what the different voice settings do. A more expressive emotional range makes your voiceover sound more dynamic. Lower similarity makes your voiceover sound less like the original speaker's voice. A higher style boost exaggerates the style of the original speaker's voice. You can get the AI voiceover plan if you just need to generate voiceovers, but the voiceover feature is automatically included in the Artlist Max plan at no extra cost, which gives you absolutely everything you need to create amazing videos. Go ahead and sign up using the link down below to get two months for free when you sign up for the annual plan. Let's go through some of the other changes from the client. The client wants to remove this portion of the video, which means we'll need to shorten the music as well. I'll select the clips I'm going to remove and I'll take note of the duration here. It's 6 seconds and 11 frames. I'll delete this section and then select the music and I'll hit Ctrl D to change the duration. I'll hit minus and I'll make it shorter by 6 seconds and 11 frames and hit return. Then I'll mark that change as completed. The next change from the client is to move this one frame to the left. I can select this shot and hit the comma key to move it one frame to the left and you can hit the period key to move it one frame to the right. If you hold down shift and hit the period or comma keys, you can move the clip left or right by 10 frames at a time. You can also select the cut point at the beginning or the end of the clip and use the same shortcuts to extend or shorten the duration of the clip. The client also wants to replace this shot. So here's a quick way to replace clips directly from the browser window. I'll select the clip we're going to change and hit shift F to reveal it in the browser. Then I'll look for another clip we haven't used. I can select the new clip and hit shift R to replace the clip, but it will replace the clip by adding the entire new clip. So I'll undo that and instead I'll scrub through the clip to find the point at which I want the clip to start and I'll hit I to create an endpoint. Then with the clip still selected, I'll hit option R to replace the clip on the timeline with the exact same duration starting at that endpoint. And our final change from the client is to make it pop. Now, this could be interpreted in so many different ways, but I'm going to assume that he wants a grade or a look that is maybe more saturated or more contrasty. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So I'll add an adjustment layer across the length of my entire edit, and I'll add a custom LUT effect to the adjustment layer. I'm going to choose my fire and ice LUT and I'll set the mix value to 75% to reduce the intensity of the LUT. I'll also hit command 6 to add a color wheels adjustment and I'm going to boost the global saturation a little bit to make it pop. Like really pop. And then I'll mark that comment as completed. Now that the changes are done, I'll export version 2 and upload it to frame.io. While it's uploading, let me tell you that there are free and paid plans and you can use Frame.io for free right now if you want to try it out. This video is not sponsored by Frame.io, it's just a super useful tool that I use almost every single day. I'll head over to Frame.io in my web browser and I can drag and drop version 2 onto the original version to create a version stack. This is great because the client can switch between different versions if they need to reference the original and they can see if you responded to any of their comments as well. So I'll send this version back to the client and hopefully he's happy with it. Despite their resilience, turtles face numerous threats in the modern world. By understanding, respecting and protecting these ancient beings, we can contribute to the preservation of life on Earth. This is perfect!